What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build, with today's showcase focusing on a fantastic in-game build for all players, and will allow you to easily solo or do group based contents with the use of the Urza Frozers and Elemental Worlds, and gain back a nice boost in super energy and general energy in return. I've noticed that a lot of new players entering endgame won't have the necessary mod such as Charge with Lights or War Myself to happily complete the difficult content, and be rewarded with high endgame gear. Such mods aren't necessary but they do make players life a hell of a lot more easier from the get go, and almost take the stress out of doing endgame content in general. With that in mind, there is a really simple and effective setup that you can use that will greatly enhance your survival and allow you to be a great team supporter without the use of charge with lights or war mind cells, and all you really need is the Urza Frozen Exotics, Middle Tree Void Titan, and perhaps some Elemental Wells in the mix as well. What I am going to show you is a fantastic build that you can pick up and use for whatever tough content in mind, and be rewarded for greatly supporting your team as well. Mods aren't necessary in this build, but if you like you can freely add them in which will greatly enhance the build to be a number 1 for any endgame content in mind. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. Starting off with the subclass, we'll be using the Code of the Commander subtree and this is a fantastic subclass tree that doesn't get enough praise by a lot of people in game. This tree has everything. You have the ability to buff your teammates output damage by creating a large shield for them. You can attach void detonators to targets that can explode and cause even more damage over time. Killing an enemy with a void detonator can grant you melee, grenades and health regen back. And lastly, you'll be creating an explosion wherever you go. This subclass on its own is the best for simply tagging and destinating targets on a large scale and can cause a chain reaction which for PvE enemies is game over, while for PvP it can be lights out for them. I also forget to mention that void detonators can spread to others as well if they detonate and kill a target, so something like this in PvP or PvE would be widespread when done correctly. Now when you attach the exotic Urza Ferozas to the subclass, your shielding ability becomes even more powerful with a boost to movement speed and also, most importantly, any damage guarded by you from the super gets converted back to super energy for you at the end and this is important if you wish to use your super back to back. You have limited duration on your shield usage of course, but if you can get the enemy boss or any enemies in general to target you, you can consistently get 50-80% to super energy back which will help your teammates out for extra damage and extra supers for all round. To further enhance our abilities some more and have them fully maxed out when activated, standard mods such as distribution and bomber will always be helpful in the long run, with further aid for weapon perks such as wellspring or demolitionist. The most important mod you're going to be making full use of are the elemental world mods that are surprisingly powerful in ability based builds like my own. This all together is what we'll be aiming for, to be the main target for everyone and allow our teammates a safe passage. For the weapons, I've decided to go with the long range approach so that I can utilize my abilities more efficiently while sticking closely to my teammates. The weapons I've chosen are designed for boosting my stats and empowering others, rather than focusing so much on damage which will be mainly coming from my super. A prime example of this is me using the higher Beldo sidearm with full auto and wellspring, which is a perfect close range weapon against minor and major enemies and feels quite amazing to use. I found that this weapon is a great replacement for my breach light which I've been using for a very very long time and feels similar in the way it feels, but it doesn't have the strong impactful feel that the breach light offers. This may be because both weapons are a different frame type, but I'm slowly getting used to the weapon as a whole and it's a great primary to have when you don't have an effective shotgun to replace it. It doesn't roll with damaging perks sadly except for high impact reserves, so if you were expecting to get kill clip or rampage then you're out of luck. For our secondary I'm using the new bow called the imperial needle with killing wind and fresh and surprisingly it's quite good for the build I was going for. Killing wind on the weapon is a great perk to have for any weapon in general as it's giving you a boost in handling, movement and weapon range, which makes it perfect for a bow with the way it's designed. And then we have Fresh, that will be giving you extra super energy upon kills, and this perk when combined with our exotic and elemental armaments and frontal wisdom mod basically means that we have a consistent route of gaining super energy all the time, and I kid you not, this combo will allow you to be the first person in your team to gain a super within the first few minutes of starting. 
damage from the weapon isn't the greatest considering it is a lightweight frame, but we can use the Font of Might mod to get a boost in damage, or alternatively get a roll with the Frenzy Perk that will always be active and provide you a 20% boost in damage. Now one tip to be aware of is that the bow is void which matches my subclass and will also activate the Elemental Armors mod as well, which is required if you want a way to produce worlds at your disposal. For Heavy, I've chosen to use the Coduella Rocket Launcher with Quick Draw and Cluster Bombs, and this will be handy for increased DPS and using in bosses. As I've mentioned before, Rocket Launchers have gotten a 30% buff, and now is a great time to fully use them for the max potential against bosses, or generally anything. The Rocket Launcher sticks with the theme of the build of using it long distance to our advantage, and the amount of damage we do is quite noticeable compared to before. Swords are still kings in terms of quicker DPS, but rockets now, especially the ones that roll with lasting impressions, are the new key weapons that many players are now opting into bringing into Nightfalls and Raids. For the stats, your two main areas of focus this time around will be the Disciplined Intellect area, and both these two stats can be immensely improved on without the need to heavily invest in them, if you have the right perks and mods to assist you of course. For example, for the Discipline stat at 70, we don't have the Demolitions perk to aid us in fast regeneration this time round, which means we can invest our stat elsewhere. This isn't so much of a problem though, as our subclass has the ability called Resupply, which allows us to regain health, mainly including energy back, upon Void Detonators' explosions. As I mentioned earlier, Void Detonators can spread and cause even more havoc, so the amount of energy you get back will vary from time to time. But we can further supplement this ability with the Bomber and Distribution mod, and also Wellspring perk from our main primary. These mods with the 70 Discipline cooldown should be enough for you to instantly get your grenades back as if you had the Demolition perk active, and will be the most invested stat area for the entire build. We then have the Intellect area, and that forward to you are probably thinking how this stat will make a difference in changing up the build. Now when building up a super, we don't have mods such as Dynamo to help with super cooldown, and Exotic only gives us back super energy depending on how much damage has been done to our shields. To fix this area, our bow has the fresh perk that will provide a chunk of super energy back to user upon final blow kills, which should be very often against minor enemies. But at the same time, the elemental well called Phantom Might will provide you a 50% faster super cooldown upon picking up an elemental well, and this here is how your cooldown will increase drastically. Our cooldown for this stat will go from a 40 to 90, which is a 3 minute 52 second cooldown, instead of a 4 minute 45 cooldown at 40. You don't need anything else more from here, unless you want to create orbs of power that can also further help, but these two methods here should be enough for you to easily build your super up from the get go, and then have a consistently high cooldown throughout your play. The rest of your stats should be at standard 50 to 60 in recovery and resilience, and then everything else being whatever you like. Of course, if you prefer more melee over discipline or if you want to balance the two stats out, then it's recommended you do so as the build does utilize melee as well. Now onto the main topic at hand, here are the mods that we're currently using and how they best play out. For ahead, we have Discipline and Front of Might mod, Army of Resilience, Fastball, Overload Bow, and Elemental Ordnance mod, Chest, we have Discipline, Cacus of Dampner Times 2, and Front of Wisdom mod. Leg we have Maya Discipline, Absolution, Better Already, and Elemental Armors mod. A Mark we have Recovery, Distribution, and Bomber mod. There have been a lot of talk from players from all walks of life when using the Elemental World mods, and many of them don't enjoy the benefits the mod can provide when comboed correctly. I believe this is one of the main issues that players are trying to build around. The War mods aren't the strongest compared to using the Child of Light mods or the War Myself mods, who have better lasting effects for the whole duration of a mission. But the World mods can offer some great synergy if you plan to stick with a specific role in games such as I have, or if you plan to use just light based builds. With the build I have, I can easily do Endgame Nightfalls, Legends, 2 Grandmaster, and constantly have a super up with 80% free super energy back upon soaking up damage with it, and also drop wells that can boost my and my other teammates' abilities, etc if picked up by them. And we also get a further boost in abilities in area control, thanks to the Void Detonators, which can bring in some extra damage when needed. On top of that, the build also acts as a support role with the way the subclass functions as you can protect, buff, heal and provide constant ability regen as long as they all stay nearby you. 
The ability alone can do some impressive work, and added in the world mods can just further enhance the build even more. Here's an example. I have two ways of making wells with my gear, one of them being through the grenades thanks to the elemental ordnance mod, and the other through weapon kills thanks to the elemental armors mod. Both of these two will be used constantly throughout the build, so you're going to be always be creating wells for yourself and your teammates, and this can help when playing safe as ability energy can be rotated to everyone, with everyone putting their own feed into it. With that, we then have two other mods that will benefit greatly from the wells, and this is the Font of Might that will provide you with a 10% boost in damage, which is great for quick burst damage, but only lasts for 5 seconds. And then we have the Font of Wisdom mod, that will provide roughly 50% intellect to our own, and increase our cooldown rapidly, and thus make building up supers quickly. From this build alone, you now have the ability to get a boost in damage for yourself and for your allies via exotic, faster super cooldown than ever before, consistent source of wells for all, perfect crowd control options, constantly rotating ability energy for all, and finally, a tanky build for endgame content. The build is like I mentioned throughout, a beast in endgame content such as Nightfall Ordeals, Legend Lost Sectors, Dungeons, Gambit Boss Phases, or Grandmaster Nightfalls, and will seriously be a big hand for those that want to do the content flawlessly, with a team that knows exactly what they're doing. It does what it's designed to do fantastically, and honestly is a great addition to all the titan builds that we have currently for the tougher content. Half the things I've mentioned aren't even that needed because of how well the build is designed around just limited selection of tools to use. But my final input before I finish is to not sleep on the elemental world mods if you are a light user, as they provide some benefits that are much better compared to charge of light and war my cells which, at the current moment, are limited for a few. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Type 2 lore content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.